So, so input costs are going up. How much of that is a function of higher interest rates and how much is it a function of organic inflation? Yeah, a, a lot of it based on all my contacts. There's a little bit of it from interest rates, but the truth is uh, input costs are going up. Steel, aluminum, uh, uh, raw materials. Uh, in the surveys we do here at the Dallas Fed, the most recent survey we just did, half of my uh, companies in this district, and we, we've got a vibrant uh, district with uh, over 50 Fortune, Fortune 500 companies, half of the respondents say that tariffs are in, and talk of tariffs are increasing their input costs. Two-thirds of them are saying that, uh, that business uncertainty related to that and higher input costs is causing them to be more cautious about spending decisions. So I think a lot of this is about input costs. And then you get to some companies can pass on input costs to the consumers. But if you're customer facing, uh, uh, you may not be able to pass on those price increases. Uh, and, and so you're seeing your margins erode unless you do other things to lower your costs. And that's what we're seeing companies striving to do. Do you see inflation rising? I think the cyclical inflation pressures are building, and that's because of tight labor markets and some of these input costs. But I will tell you technology, as well as to some extent globalization, are pushing the other way, are deflationary pressures. So my own view is in the short run, you'll see inflation pressures build but I don't think inflation's running away from us. So at the Fed, I think that gives us a little bit of latitude to be patient and gradual in our thinking about monetary policy. Yeah. I don't expect inflation to spike up to the upside in a sustainable way. I'm glad you mentioned that because the journal this morning has an editorial board warning. Uh, the editorial board is, is warning in this headline, America is not an island. As the world economy right. slows, Trump and the Fed need to adapt. In the piece, the editorial board writes this, start with the Fed, which should rethink its December rate increase. No other major central bank is likely to raise rates soon. The Fed needs to weigh whether it should expand the gulf between the U.S. and foreign monetary policies at a fragile moment. Your response, should the Fed hold off on this uh, rate hike next month? Uh, I think we're at the, just for your viewers, Fed funds rate is now at two to two and a quarter. We've moved eight times uh, over the last two and a half, three years. So we've made a lot of progress in quote unquote normalizing monetary policy. At this stage, you're going to hear me be much more careful and avoid being rigid or predetermined it, regarding our future moves. I, I think we might have some further moves to go, but I'm going to be very, in the lingo, data dependent uh, and avoid, again, being rigid or predetermined about the path of rates and the pace, the pace at which we're moving. And I think that's appropriate at this stage in the, in the cycle. Will, will, will the president's recent pressure on Jay Powell and the Fed be an influence here, Robert? Because, you know, you put, you put the economics aside for a moment and what you're seeing in terms of the economy and whether or not a slowdown is on the horizon and maybe the Fed needs to, to sit back. Was that an independent thought or do you think there's a chance that the Fed calling out Jay Powell and, and calling out the Fed for being loco, uh, do you think that's influencing your hand and your colleague's hand? I don't think so, no. Uh, obviously, we're human beings, and we read the paper and watch the news. But no, our, our job is to analyze the economy in an apolitical way without concerns about political influence. Criticism is part of the job. Uh, when I took this job and others around the table took their jobs, that, that's, part of, that's, part of the, uh, that's part of the process here. And so, you, as you pointed out, you heard from me in April. Uh, my views on a potential of some slowing. Uh, my views are updated now, but no, I, I don't think uh, I don't think we're going to be, be susceptible to political influence or political pressure. Yeah. Our job, though, is to accurately analyze this economy and make sound monetary policy decisions. I think that's a big enough challenge, and that's the one we'll we'll be focused yeah, on. Yeah, I mean that's what everybody wants to make sure that you that you're staying independent.